Hey, this is Dustin Neely from Church Planning for the Rest of Us, and I'm here with my friend Jared Wilson, and we are talking right now about your book that's coming out. It's a book that I'm excited to read called Gospel Wakefulness, and when does it do? Uh, it comes out Reformation Day this year, October 31st. Oh, there you go. Well, tell us a little bit about it and uh, what's inside. Yeah, um, the premise of the book is um, that the missing ingredient in uh, most of our Christian lives, most of our churches, is um, just flat out being staggered by the gospel, being astonished by the gospel. So gospel wakefulness is um, is really about uh, treasuring Christ more greatly and savoring him more sweetly. Um, and so it's kind of like, um, I describe it as like a quantum leap in our sanctification. And it's something that happens when the gospel intersects with our brokenness. Um, something that happens to us. It's not really something you can get or acquire, um, you know, through like practical steps. Um, it's an experience, kind of like the prodigal son, when you know, he came to his senses, uh, you know, or, um, some translations say he came to himself when he was in that, you know, in that pigsty. Um, or, um, you know, the lame man outside the beautiful gate in the book of Acts who, um, you know, he beheld, you know, the proclamation of the gospel. He was asking for money, but he got the word of God and he, he ended up, you know, being healed. And so he's leaping and, and, and praising God. Um, and so it, it kind of, um, I look at like First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6 where um, uh, 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 Paul writes, um, you became imitators of us and of the Lord because you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So there's something about having your legs knocked out from under you. Yeah. There's something about, um, I think something I put in the book is God won't be your only hope until he's your only hope. Yeah. Um, and so that kind of comes out of a personal experience of my own um, where, you know, I just, I lost everything and I was at the bottom of the barrel. And in that moment, hearing the gospel changed everything for me. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, for the guy that is hearing this and they say, I want to read that when it comes out, but until it does, what are some, some tips that you'd give him to, to kind of come to this gospel wakefulness for yeah. his part that he is able to do uh, that, that could help guys even today? Yeah. Um, well, one of, my, one of my favorite things that one of my favorite people um, says, Ray Ortland says, stare at the glory of God until you see it. Um, and so it's, it's the concept of we can be looking but not seeing. Yeah. Um, but the only way to see, at least the only way that I know to see something is to be looking. Mm -hmm. um, so until you see, you have to be looking. And so, you know, the scriptures call us to fix our eyes on, yeah. on Christ. And um, you know, the scriptures say to be, uh, uh, to be beholding Christ is to be transformed from, you know, from one glory to the next. And um, so I would say you have to be looking at Christ constantly. So even if you're not experiencing what you might consider wakefulness, and I've had guys ask me like, how do I get that? How do mm -hmm. I do that? I don't have it, you know. Right. And the an answer is, I don't know. I mean, you can't get it. I can't say to you, be astonished. Right. And, and, and you say, oh, okay, I'll be astonished now. Like it's something right. that happens. But it won't happen unless you're looking, unless that's you're right. gazing like the angels into right. the gospel. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And certainly things, reading the Bible, praying, asking that the Lord would sure. do this in you. I mean, that's a good start. Sure. So, well, brother, thanks for your time. Thank can't you, wait Dustin. to read it. Yeah.